What's going on guys? Welcome back into the channel. Today I want to talk about benchmark stats that are going to be important to look out for whenever you're determining who to call up to the next level in MLB The Show. Now these count for all levels, whether it be single A, double A, triple A, or MLB. There are some stats that you really want to look out for whenever you're calling players up to that next level and trying to get them to perform and continue on their road to development to the major leagues. The first thing that I want to talk about here in today's video is a tool that is extremely helpful for you in determining when to call a player up, send a player down, keep them where they're at, and essentially in developing your own benchmarks and deciding what ratings and stats and things you need in order to call a player up or send them down. This is a tool that's going to help you formulate those opinions on your own. And what's going to happen is every time you simulate through the end of a month, it's going to give you a recap on what happens with your roster. So if I go over to the roster management tab and click on it now that I've advanced through the end of July, it has this little green exclamation point. When I click on it, it's going to pop up with these notifications. And these are a great way to build your knowledge of where the benchmarks are, what's considered overperforming, what's considered underperforming. And these things will help you guide, help guide you very much as to which players to call up and send down. The reason being for this is the game specifically picks out the players that are severe over and severe under achievers and those are the players that you want to target for movement within your farm system or within your organization great example here on the screen evan phillips was hit hard posting a 10.8 era that's saying up there in the subject line that he is a struggling triple a pitcher and it is suggesting to you that you may want to send that player down likewise here we have one that is highlighting jalen davis who posted a 311 batting average and 61 at bats driving in 12 runs that one highlighting that that player played well and that might be a benchmark of a player that you might want to call up to the next level so on and so forth we're getting another good era here with a pitcher and then another one here with another pitcher so these notifications at the end of each month are the perfect tool to help guide you on your way to number one developing your opinion on what benchmarks you need to hit in order to call a player up to the next level in terms of their performance and in terms of you know actually just telling you outright hey Hey, this player is playing really well, you might want to consider calling them up. So let's go ahead and dive into the minor leagues here on my roster and give you guys a good idea of where I consider the benchmarks to be in order to call a player up to the next level. So first things first, I want to talk about kind of standard performance for players at any level. Kind of generally considered a solid batting average would be something in the, the 260s, I would say. Uh, you know, you're batting over one-fourth of the time you're getting a hit. That's kind of the primary benchmark for defensive players, but that's not the only thing that you want to look at. The other thing, if you really want to dive into their stats and figure out if they're playing well, is you want to dive into their fielding percentage, their number of errors, number of putouts, and things of this nature. These don't matter quite as much as the batting average because the defensive skills will come along in time, in my opinion. I focus more on the bat than the defensive skills because it is very hard to develop the bat in comparison. Um, so from a defensive perspective, you definitely want your players to be above 90%. You know, that's kind of like the the bottom and and that's that's not even asking a lot. I mean, that's like that's like bottom level, you know. Generally speaking, if you have a good fielder, you're looking at somebody in the high 90s, you know, like 97, 98, 99, even 100% fielding with very few errors. And then you know that your player is prepared on the defensive side of the ball. You know, you know at that point that that player is going to be successful at the next level. However, let's go ahead and talk about batting average, what I consider to be the most important uh, kind of benchmark to consider for a uh, position player whenever you're deciding whether to call them up or send them down. We already talked a little bit about how we consider like 260s to be pretty good performance or average performance. Uh, you know, that's not necessarily the level of player that you would consider calling up. Whenever a player starts to get over the batting average of 300 or in the high 290s, that is when the player is call up worthy. So, for example, Patrick Bailey here at catcher is batting 350, and that's really high. That's exceptional. That's the type of player that you absolutely want to be on the lookout for in order to call them up to the major leagues. However, you know, you could have guys that are kind of in the high 
you know, 290s, 270s, like Kendall Simmons, for example. This is a guy that I have considered calling up because of his performance. This is a guy that, you know, he's batting 276 here, so you can expect maybe a bit of a drop off in the major leagues. He'll still be batting above 200 in the major leagues, more than likely. Um, but this is a person that, you know, is not necessarily prepped to excel at the next level. You're looking for those high 290s and, you know, above in order to determine whether a guy's bat is ready to move up to the next level. So there's only one player here that I've determined is really worthwhile absolutely considering moving up to the next level, and that's Patrick Bailey. You know, go to double A, and you'll see a lot of the same things. So Ryan Howard batting 305, somebody that I absolutely want to consider moving up to the next level. And then you're going to see a lot of kind of average batting averages. John Rhodes, somebody that might be worthwhile moving up at 279, so on and so forth. But you're going to see a lot of guys in the low to mid 200s. Those are guys that are kind of just stagnating and need to work on their batting skills before they can be brought up to the next level. But I just wanted to throw that in there that just because a player is having a good batting average or having a good fielding percentage or any stat that I talk about in this uh, video does not necessarily mean you should automatically call them up. These are just benchmarks to look for to help you gauge when to call a player up. Now the next thing and the last thing that I really want to talk about in terms of hitters and position players in terms of stats that you want to look for in terms of calling them up is going to be home runs. Now you can dive into a lot more stats. You can dive into RBIs, you can dive into runs, you can even dive into some of the advanced metrics that they have available for you like their on-base percentage and, and they get even more advanced than that. Um, but on a general level, you know, for most of the people that are either newer to the game or not experience with this or don't want to spend a ton of time diving into every single stat, looking at home runs is also an important gauge of a player's ability. So for Garrett Frechette here, for example, he's batting 265, which is what we talked about as a good batting average. However, he has eight home runs to boot with that, and that is currently leading this double A team. Now, eight home runs is by no means like out of this world you know if you want somebody that has insane power you're probably looking at 15 plus home runs at this midway point in the season that's going to be really hard to come by but if you look at Frechette for example to pair with a 265 average he has eight home runs which is offensive production for your team which makes up for the slightly lower batting average than you might like to see to call a player up and so those bonus home runs those bonus points that you're putting on the board add value to that player being called up. So even though he has that 265 average, he has a lot of home runs, might be worthwhile to call this guy up. We've now talked a lot about hitters and position players and what matters for them in terms of benchmarks and things to look for for those players. So let's go ahead on and take a look at pitchers. Uh, we're going to kind of group starting pitchers, relief pitchers, and closing pitchers all together. Um, but you have to understand that there are various different things that you're looking for between those positions. So from the outset, you're looking for, uh, you know, for starting pitchers, guys that can go deeper into innings, whereas for relief pitchers, and closing pitchers, you may be looking for something different. It's going to depend on how you formulate your uh, kind of your rotation and, and how you want those players to play for you. You could have a lot of Tyler Rogers types guys that aren't going to get a lot of strikeouts, but they get a lot of batters out and they don't have a high ERA. That's up to you. But most people, whenever they're taking a look at relief pitchers and closing pitchers specifically, they're going to be taking a look at strikeouts. That is an incredible metric. Um, one of the best metrics to tell if a player is ready for the next level or not. So for relief pitchers in specific, I say that you're generally looking for a player that is going to have a relatively low ERA. And when I talk about lo relatively low ERA, you're looking at three-ish or lower on whether you want to call that guy up or not. Now, ERA is not as important for relief pitchers and closing pitchers, though it still does matter. However, what I tend to look for in relief pitchers is as well how many strikeouts they have and how many walks they have in compared to their number of innings pitched. 
pitch. So Ryan Webb here is a good example. He has more strikeouts than innings pitched, which means on the average, he is getting one or more strikeouts whenever he comes into the game, which is what you want from a relief pitcher. You want a guy that can come in for an inning or two and strike a couple batters out and get through those innings without allowing runs. That's good production from those players. And in addition to that, from relief pitchers, you don't want guys that are going to allow a lot of guys on base. So you don't want a lot of walks from those guys. Ryan Webb has 14 in 36 innings pitched, so he's allowing maybe a walk every other inning, which is pretty solid. And finally, we come to starting pitchers. And what do we look for in starting pitchers? We're going to look for a lot of the same things. You know, with Sean Hiel here, for example, in my franchise, I've been talking about bringing him up to the major leagues for a while now. Well, what do I see in a guy like Sean Hiel that is leading me to believe that he's ready to be called up to the major leagues? Well, number one, he has a positive win-loss ra uh, win loss ratio. He's 5-0. and And this is something that I consider more for starting pitchers than anybody because this is going to be a good indication of whether that guy is going to keep you in games or not. Now, win-loss ratio, not always going to be a 100% teller of whether you're pitching well or not because you can pitch well and not get the run support. But I did want to throw in there that in comparison to other positions, that is something that I take into account. You know, Sean Hiel, for example, he's 5-0. and That says a lot to me that, you know, he's out there getting positive production and not letting up a lot of of runs and you know he's keeping his team in games that's positive for the next level in addition to that Hiel has the same number of strikeouts that he has innings played essentially so you know you're always getting at least one strikeout per inning which is pretty solid production you want that to be above one strikeout per inning in my personal opinion then in terms of starting pitchers low walk numbers is one of the most important things you know and i'm going to basically say all of these stats are really important you want a player being called up to the next level to be pretty productive in all of these areas now that might not be quite the same going from triple a or sorry from double a to triple a because they still have that room to grow but when you call a guy up to the major leagues you want them to be productive in i think all of these areas and so hell for example whenever we compared him to the relief Leaf pitchers, he allowed a lot less walks per inning than those other guys. He only is allowed 17 walks in 71 innings pitched, which is really solid. And then again, to add on top of that, he has that 2.27 ERA. But you know, these are the things that you guys want to look for. Hopefully, talking about these benchmarks and kind of laying out the stats that I have in my head, you know, will help you guys formulate your own opinion on where you want your benchmarks to be in order to help gauge whether you should call a guy up or send him down or keep him where he's at. I hope that this video did help you guys in some way, and if it did help you, leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and comment down below. I'll see you guys in the next video, and I hope you guys have a good one.